Hey guys, laying on the floor today. Got a LT1 car in the shop today that has a Mega Squirt on it for an LS1 based vehicle. And to do that, they have a nice LS style reluctor wheel on the back of the crank here that feeds the crank position signal to the Mega Squirt so that I can calculate injection and ignition timing set points. So important for that to work. Uh, let me show you a composite logger. The, the problem is this car will fire and then not fire after that and falls on its face, dies. So let me show you what we can log from this trigger wheel on Mega Squirt. With the uh, Mega Squirt system, you can log the crank and cam phases so that you can troubleshoot and see if there are any signal issues. And on this log, we do see one little signal that doesn't correspond to an actual tooth right here. See that little extra line there? And then following that, we have lost sync indications for every rising edge of the crank pulse. Uh, we're going to track that down to the position on the reluctor wheel that is actually having issues, and we're going to see if we can figure out why. So to do that, we're going to count each phase that's reported here and try and relate that to a position on the crank sensor. So up here we've got a tooth, short tooth, short tooth, short tooth, short tooth, short tooth, long tooth, short tooth, short tooth, short tooth, long tooth, long tooth. And in between the two long teeth, on the very first long tooth, the inside edge of it, that's where we're having the problem where we're picking up a phantom signal. Uh, let's let's take a look over at the crank. I'm gonna Okay, here is the reluctor wheel, so we're going to count the teeth. We want five short teeth, and then a long tooth, and then we want three short teeth after that, followed by two long teeth. So right here, we have one short tooth, two, three, four, five, followed by a long tooth, followed by three short teeth, one, two, three, followed by two long teeth over here. So this is where our issue is. I'm going to move over there so you can see a little better. So right here is our problem area. We have our three short teeth preceding these two long teeth and the crank pattern follows after that. So we know we're in the right spot. What we don't see is anything obviously damaged with this trigger wheel. So I'm wondering if maybe it was magnetized or if we have something else electrical that's causing some interference to ruin our sink. More troubleshooting is needed at this point. I'm gonna have to see what I can figure out going forwards. More clues to why this car is not running. Um, we've got a nice healthy RPM signal with just the passenger side coils plugged in. I'm going to crank it over with the driver side coils plugged in as well and I'll let you observe what the waveform looks like when I'm cranking the motor over. Now I crank the motor over for the same amount of time and you would expect to see a similar waveform but you don't. You see we lost sync once, twice, three times all while we were cranking. Shouldn't see that. So now I'm gonna unplug individual coils and see if we can isolate this even further. Since the problem we were observing is not coil specific, there's a chance that it's related to the type of spark plugs that we're running. So I went ahead and pulled a plug out and this part number comes back as a resistorless nine heat range plug. And if the EFI system that you're using isn't designed for a resistorless plug, then that's going to cause you electrical noise similar to this. So we're going to get a set of plugs that have a resistor in them in the motor and just go from there. That should hopefully clear a lot of this up. We have our no start issue fixed and this one's headed home. If you want to see more content like this where we dig in and troubleshoot, leave me a comment. Be sure to like and subscribe.